Okay, so not too long ago, I don't know, four or five years ago, maybe four years ago, I did an unboxing of this Harbor Freight Central Nomadic 10 gallon air compressor. It's actually gotten an astonishing number of views and a lot of comments, um, both good and bad. Uh, however, uh, since moving to the new place, I've run into a lot of problems with it. <clears throat> um, getting it to fire up is near impossible, and um, even when I can get it to fire up, it won't, you know, it'll fill up, but if, if, if I'm using the air, uh, it goes back down and won't fire up again. And, eh. and so uh, I thought it was because of the cold, so you know, I'd heat it up with the heat gun. Uh, for oh five ten minutes and she pops right over. Now, if the temperature outside in the teens are colder, uh, that's not even a guarantee that that heat gun thing will work. Uh, it does occasionally, but not always. And I thought, well, it's because it's oil and it's not a synthetic oil, so it's getting thick, and and that is part of it. The other part is this garage it has a horrible, horrible. Um, uh, uh, electrical service out here and this is a 2.5 horsepower motor and as a result it wants a lot of juice to just to kick on once it kicks on and starts running it's fine problem is, is it's not getting enough juice so even when it's warm it doesn't always kick on uh, otherwise it works fine you know if I like bring it in the house which I've done a couple times and let it get up to room temperature she functions perfectly normal this 30 pound a 30 gallon husky you know i've seen good and bad reviews on it mostly good um it was a little bit pricey um it weighs 118 pounds believe it or not holy moly um thing is the main reason um i opted for this uh is because of the 30 gallon i'm on I'm going to be painting these puppies and there's going to be sanding and painting and while this won't do it continuously I'll get quite a bit done before I have to let it build up. Um, certainly it's going to work better than the little one. The main reason I got it though is because it has a 1.6 horsepower motor and it's uh, oilless. Now I know, I know, the oil filled compressors are better so on and so forth. I had a uh, oilless compressor prior to my Harbor Freight one that lasted oh 10, 12 years. So, you know, I'm not expecting to get a lifetime of use out of this. And I, I'm also not, you know, I'm not fooling anybody. The reality is this is um, basically a hobbyist home garage air compressor. I don't have the power out here to put on uh, one of those 220 uh, you know stand in the corner real tall. I mean I would love one of those, but I just don't have the power out here um, Down the road one day uh, We're gonna rerun the electric out here, uh, but it's gonna be a couple years probably it's expensive and frankly um, It's low on the priority list this however, I think will suffice in the meantime um, And uh, I'll get to some specifics about it uh, after I unbox it here in a minute uh, but I thought I'd just kind of unbox it, show you what it is, let you hear it run, and then we'll go from there. Okay, and that's it. I mean, it was, you know, it's pre-assembled. All I did was break the bands and lift the top off. I didn't even have to cut anything. Just lifted the top right off the bottom. And it's got the wheels on, it's, you know, it's got the handle on, it's all, you know, assembled, ready to go. Um... And one of the things I like about it, it has two, whoops, where are they? Two fittings. So I can run two different air hoses. And what I'll probably do is have one for my tools, and then the other one I'll just keep for, you know, dusting things off and filling tires, that sort of thing. Um, it is a 30 gallon, uh, 6.8 SCFM at 40 psi, and 5.1 at 90, 175 psi. And it's a 1.7 horse. I thought it was a 1.6. It's a 1.7 horse. Still considerably less than the 2.5 the Harbor Freight one is. And I think for this garage, that'll work fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, essentially, the only problems I've seen or heard people talk about is with this. 
And there's a couple videos on how to fix this if it leaks uh, when you first start it up. It's essentially just dirt in there from the factory. You just got to pull this out and then pull out the uh, plastic piece and then clean off the O-ring. Seems pretty easy fix. Uh, so I'm going to read through the directions after dinner here in a little bit. And then uh, then I'll fire it up and let you guys get a listen to it. Um, the oilless ones are generally loud. However, um, by the decimal rating, this is actually 5 de 0.5 decibels lower than that one's rated at. So, eh, it's kind of a wash in my opinion. Um, I know 0.5 decibels is actually quite a bit, but um, I've heard these on YouTube and they're still pretty kind of loud. So, um, still, it's not going to be any louder than that one for sure. So, um, yeah. So that one, that one I'm going to take downstairs, put in the basement, and I'll use that for uh, working when I do stuff in the basement. And then th this one I'll just keep out here. Um, so I didn't un show you the unboxing. I think that's been done to death. So uh, if you feel cheated because of that, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to get it ready. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go eat. i got burgers on the grill, even though it's 40 degrees out. Um, and then, uh, I'll come back out here later, fire it up, and uh, let you hear it running, and, uh, we'll see how it is. But I gotta read the directions first, I don't know what I have to do, but, and here's a little sheet, what they say, whoops, what they say will work with it. You know, frankly, um, yeah, I have my doubts about the sander and the uh, painting. I think the painting, this will definitely be better for painting than uh, that was. However, I still, you know, it's still not, you know, come on. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do all that great. But I should be able to do, um, mostly the painting is what I'm looking for. I've got to repaint my bike, my 550, and then we, um, I'm going to repaint the, uh, the Goldwing. And I've got a little detail airbrush that I'll use for that because these parts aren't very big. And this should be okay for that. I should be all right. Um, I'll probably get one part done, have to wait, get another part done, have to wait, that sort of thing. But I'm okay with that. Because, um, you know, not in any rush, really. Okay, enough babbling. Talk to you in a little bit. Uh, after dinner coffee. Okay, so I did a little reading, and apparently you don't have to do anything except turn it on. So I'm going to do that. I'll run for a minute or two, and then I'll cut you off and come back later. Um, every review I read and every video I saw on this um, basically said the same thing. Nine to ten minutes to fill it. It is a bit of a behemoth, so I can understand that. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then, uh, like I said, after a minute or two, I'll cut you off, and then we'll come back. I'll switch it right <laughs> It's actually not as loud as I thought, so that's not too bad. Uh, of course, that probably just means that it's going to take longer to fill up. But, uh, so we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. It did say to bring this all the way out so that there's zero pressure on this side, let it fill up, and then adjust it in. So, but yeah. Seems to be, there we go. And then that one's starting to fill up. And it does have a funky smell everybody talks about, so. Uh, but everybody, all, almost all the reviews I saw said it goes away after a few months. And frankly, it's not that bad. You know, in the garage, I'm not gonna smell it anyway much. Okay, it just kicked off. Uh, I'd say that's pretty close to 175. Um, and it's got these quick couplers. So, okay. So you see it's open. You see a little gap here. Whoops, a little gap here maybe. A little gap. So if you push this in, it closes and locks in place. Nice and sturdy. Pull it back. It stays back. Whoops. Stays back until you put another tool in it. <clears throat> so that's kind of neat. Um, 
like I said, we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. I don't hear any leaking, so that's good. Let's crank this up a little bit. I think for now, I'll open it pretty much all the way. Whoopsie. Not that it matters. But. So the adjuster already works better than the Harbor Freight one did. Not that it was bad, it just wasn't as good. Although interesting, it's in all the way. And I am not seeing 175 PSI on the tool side. That's interesting. In fact, it's about 140, 145 maybe. That's interesting. So right away there's some sort of... I don't know if you can see it, but see if you see the two. This is at 175, this is at like 140. And I, I ran it down all the way. I, there's no more give to it. That's it. So. Alright, I'll have to play with that. But even at 145, that's fine. That one only ever went to 120, even though it said it goes 125. But And that was always fine for me. I don't have none of my tools, none of the I use... Is it, almost everything I have is like 90 psi or lower. The uh, one exception would be the um, the air gun, which I, I really only use for taking off lug nuts or spinning nuts off real quick. You know, I don't. I'm not using it to bust, you know, frozen uh, bolts or anything. So, um, so, so 175 psi, yes, but. Not at the tool side, for whatever reason. 40% uh, longer air tool runtime. Color me dubious on that one. Uh, industry leading 175 PSI rating. Well, the tank gets to 175 for sure. Uh, more power than a standard 26 gallon air compressor. Well, it's a 30 gallon, so okay. Uh, quiet operation. I give them that one. Uh, you could barely hear it outside the garage. So uh, that one you can hear <laughs> all the way to the neighbor's house. So. It's definitely much quieter. Um, it's also got the most CFM of any air compressor I've ever had, so that'll be that'll be handy. Because um, I do I do occasionally you break out the uh, die grinder and have add a few things, but they're usually quick jobs. So I don't you know it's not like a I'm not going to use the die grinder for you know. 20 minutes, half hour, you know, they're usually five, 10 minute jobs. And frankly, I did okay with that one. It would kick on a lot, but you know, yeah, that's fine. Um, so overall, uh, not bad. It gets a little warm back here, but not hot, just warm. You can feel the heat. Uh, so other than, you know, and I think I'm going to let it go overnight and see if that just bumps up slowly because it looks like it's gone up maybe a little bit since I turned it off so or since it shut off. So I'll just let it go and we'll see what happens. But overall, I'm happy with it. And uh, uh, my battery's going. Okay, so just a couple quick notes I failed to mention before my camera battery went dead. Um, <clears throat> a... Yeah, this is coming back up. I just filled the tires on my car, and it's it's slowly coming up. So I think the tool side will come up over time. Also, this the cable on this plug is ridiculously thick. I mean, I'm glad, but wow. I mean, by comparison, here's the one for the Harbor Freight 215 horse. I don't know if you can tell just how much bigger that is. It's almost twice as thick. So, uh, I will also say, when I turned it on, the lights did not go dim. I didn't have any circuit breakers go. It just went and went beautifully. Did not have the same experience. I do not have the same experience with that. So, like I said, that's gonna go downstairs. It'll get used for other things. This is gonna be the one that's in the shop. Hopefully it'll last. Uh, you know, I get that oilless ones aren't known for lasting, so we'll see, but, you know, if I can get three, four, or five years out of it. The other thing, that comes with a 90-day warranty. That one comes with a two-year. So they, they obviously think a little something about it. Uh, there is a water drain valve on the bottom. It's just a little quarter-turn valve. Uh... 
I, I'm just going to leave it. I see other people putting hoses on them and running them out. And, you know, you, if I drain it once a month, which is about what I'll probably do, you know, I don't have a problem getting under there and just giving it a quarter turn and let it drain. I mean, it's just not that big a deal. Uh, but they do, at uh, Home Depot, they do sell a kit for this that will run the hose out, and then it has a valve at the end to let the water out. Uh, but this is going to be mobile, and I don't, I don't need a hose flopping around when I'm moving it on one side of the garage or the other. Uh, I do like the assembled in the USA. Yeah, I get the parts are probably all J Chinese and Taiwanese or whatever, but, you know, somebody in the U.S. has a job because they're assembling these things. Hey, listen, I'm happy to help at least with that. If I can't, you know, if we can't get this whole thing made here, I'll take assembled by. That's, you know, it's more than that one says. And again, nothing against Harbor Freight's uh, Central Pneumatic. The thing's been great for me. I, I have no real complaints about it other than, you know, the 2.5 horsepower motor draws way more power than it should to start the motor that it's got. And I, I was thinking about it. And I don't understand why they put a 2. Point, why they put a 2.5 horsepower motor on there when you can do this whole thing in almost the same amount of time as it takes to fill that with a 1.7. Put a 1.6 on there, guys. Come on. Yeesh. Maybe maybe in an oil-filled 2.5 is... No, I've seen 1.6 ones out there. So, you know, why they went with such a beefy motor? They could put a smaller motor on there and lower the price. You know? Anyway. I'm not going to get started on that rant, but you get the idea. Okay. Uh, I want to say that's it.